Welcome to the Episcopal Church of the Redeemer on this All Saints Sunday. I'm glad you've joined us. If you have a bulletin from online, I hope you will follow along, or a prayer book and hymnal. In any case, I join you to turn your hearts to God and uh, make a joyful noise along with us. Our opening hymn is hymn 287. We're going to sing verses 1 to 4 and verse 8. Blessed be God, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. And blessed be his kingdom, now and forever. Amen. Almighty God, to you all hearts are open, all desires known. And from you no secrets are hid. Cleanse the thoughts of our hearts by the inspiration of your Holy Spirit, that we may perfectly love you and worthily magnify your holy name, through Christ our Lord. Amen. Amen.
communion and fellowship in the mystical body of your Son, Jesus Christ, our Lord. Give us grace so to follow your blessed saints in all virtuous and godly living, that we may come to those ineffable joys which you have prepared for those who truly love you. Through Jesus Christ, our Lord, who lives with you in the Holy Spirit, lives and reigns one God in glory everlasting. Amen. Please be seated for the reading of Scripture. A reading from the book of Isaiah. On this morn mountain, the Lord of hosts will make for all peoples a feast of rich food, a feast of well-aged wines, of rich food filled with marrow, of well-aged wines strained clear. And he will destroy on this mountain the shroud that is cast over all peoples, the sheep that is spread over all nations. He will swallow up death forever. Then the Lord God will wipe away the tears from all faces, and the disgrace of his people he will take away from all the earth, for the Lord has spoken. It will be said on that day, Lo, this is our God. We have waited for him so that he might save us. This is the Lord for whom we have waited. Let us be glad and rejoice in his salvation. The word of the Lord. Thank you, God. Please join me in reading the selected song for today, Psalm 24. The earth is the Lord and all that is in it, the world and all who dwell therein. For the seed we found it upon the seas, and made it far upon the rivers of the deep. Who can ascend the hill of the Lord, and who can stand in his holy place? Those who have clean hands and pure heart, who have not pledged themselves to falsehood, nor sworn by the latest fraud. They shall receive a blessing from the Lord, and a just reward from the God of their salvation. Such is the generation of those who see him, of those who seek your face for the high Lift up your heads, O gates. Lift them high, O everlasting doors, and the King of glory shall come in. Who is this King of glory? The Lord strong and mighty, the Lord mighty and mild. Lift up your heads, O gates. Lift them high, O everlasting doors, and the King of glory shall come in. Who is he, this King of glory? The Lord of hosts. A reading from the book of Revelation. I saw a new heaven and a new earth, for the first heaven and the first earth had passed away, and the sea was no more. And I saw the holy city, the new Jerusalem, coming down out of heaven from God, prepared as a bride adorned for her husband. And I heard a loud voice from the throne saying, See, the home of God is among mortals, he will dwell with them as their God. They will be his peoples, and God himself will be with them. He will wipe away every tear from their eyes. Death will be no more. Mourning and crying and pain will be no more, for the first things have passed away. And the one who was seated on the throne said, See, I am making all things new. Also, he said, Write this, for these words are trustworthy and true. Then he said to me, It is done. I am the Alpha and the Omega, the beginning and the end. The word of the Lord. I say God.
The Holy Gospel of our Lord Jesus Christ, according to John. Glory to you, Lord Lord Christ. When Mary came where Jesus was and saw him, she knelt at his feet and said to him, Lord, if you had been here, my brother would not have died. When Jesus saw her weeping and the Jews who came with her also weeping, he was greatly disturbed in spirit and deeply moved. He said, Where have you laid him? They said to him, Lord, come and see. But some of them said, Could not he who had opened the eyes of the blind man have kept this man from dying? Then Jesus again, greatly disturbed, came to the tomb. It was a cave, and a stone was lying against it. Jesus said, Take away the stone. Martha, the city of the dead man, said to him, uh, Lord, Already there's a stench, because he's been dead four days. Jesus said to her, Did I not tell you that if you believed, you would see the glory of God? So they took away the stone, and Jesus looked upward and said, Father, I thank you for having heard me. I know that you always hear me, but I have said this for the sake of the crowd standing here so that they may believe that you sent me. And when he had said this, he cried out with a loud voice, Lazarus, come out! The dead man came out, his hands and feet bound with strips of cloth, and his face wrapped in a cloth. And Jesus said to them, Unbind him and let him go. The Gospel of the Lord. Praise to you, Lord Lord Christ. In the name of God, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. Today is All Saints Sunday, which we moved because it didn't fall um, on the first day of November, and the prayer book says we should move it to the first Sunday after November 1st. We celebrate this Sunday saints, the known ones and the unknown ones all of the people who are holy. Now some of you may immediately think of someone you knew, a good man you knew growing up, a coach or a teacher or a farmer. Or perhaps your odd but utterly lovable great aunt Matilda. Others think of men and women still alive, facing danger, and for the love of God and the love of justice, keep on taking on the powers and principalities of this world. I think of a few priests in Syria and Russia, a lot of young Hong Kong activists, courageous journalists in Pakistan and Afghanistan, and in this country, nurses and doctors working in intensive care wards week after week with almost no downtime. Through their lives, their works, their courage, their prayers, we see flashes of God's life. Often, though we vaguely think of saints as people who lived in the long past, and 
We also think that, well, maybe we might join them in some vague, mythic future that would seem a long way off. Isaiah gives a different image. He says, God has prepared a great mountain with a feast on it. And I want to give you the image if you've ever been walking down a long hall in the dark, and suddenly at the end of the hall there's a lit door. And you are in the dark and it's chilly in the hall. And then suddenly you see the light, a lighted door that seems to promise warmth and food and home. Jesus says, I am the door. Through Jesus, we can go and see something about what the pray place that God has prepared for us. What Isaiah saw was being prepared. Um, well, he must have known who the caterers were because he slaps his lips and starts talking about what's going to be in that feast. And I'm only paraphrasing slightly. Texas brisket cooked all day and the night before. Steaks and uh, squash and those New World potatoes, corn on the cob, roast beef, enormous gulf shrimp, a side of venison and wine. We're talking some upscale Chateau de Free wine. The kind of wine you look in the store and say, mm, that's a little above my price range. No. And for non-wine drinkers, pure water, sweet berry drinks, small batch beers, and did I mention the desserts? All kinds of desserts. And Isaiah's vision of this mountain at the end of time with a feast on it is that the tears will be wiped away from our eyes, our tears of fear, our tears of shame, and our tears of sadness. We have gone through the gate of death, but we are now alive in the presence of Christ. And we will never feel so alive as then. Isaiah says that death is the white shroud that finally separates us from those whom we love, as it took our parents, as it has taken friends. And in its shroud it buries all we know like cold, clinging, impenetrable fog as the night comes on. And we can't see through it until we look and look again for that lit door where Christ stands, calling us to himself. When I was in Chicago before the pandemic, I had to take the subway station uh, and go towards O'Hare Airport. And waiting for the train, I looked down the tracks and suddenly I saw lights sliding down the tracks before the light of the train. And I laughed to myself and said, well, sometimes the light you see in the end of the tunnel is the oncoming train. And of course, for some of us, many of us even, that train may come sooner than we look for. Death does come to us, each of us. If not this year, this decade, next year, next decade, and if not for us, perhaps from someone we love. Part of learning to be holy, learning to be a saint, is to be aware of how precious time is, how precious an ordinary day is, how precious it is if we have a day with joy or a day without pain. But looking through that door of Jesus' body, we look into the resurrection that he has planned for us. And we do see that there is a great party planned 
again in the Gospels. That is Jesus' consistent image of when the kingdom finally comes, there will be a party. So how do you get through the door? How do you become a saint? I don't know if you ever heard of the old joke of George Carlin, uh, Roman Catholic, who said that he decided one morning he wasn't going to commit a mortal sin. He was going to go downtown and never know why, what he was going to do. And all of a sudden his conscience says to him, save the cab fare, you've already done it. We search, turn towards God with our will. We turn away from God with our will. We cannot earn our way to become saints. We are saints by God's grace in our own baptism. Though some of them, many of them, more obvious than others. What we can do is intentionally try and let the light of the resurrection fall on our lives and hearts and seek continue to have clean hands since he's already washed us. We learn to have discipline, to work at being prayerful, kind, truthful, diligent, looking for what God wants us to do in the world. That is necessary. The saints that are ahead of us, the ones who took those earlier trains, they understand that you follow the will of the Lord wherever you can figure out it's going. Now, if I tell you that you are a saint, um, I'm pretty sure if I ask you to raise your hand, do you feel like you're a conspicuous saint? No, I didn't think so. All those hands are staying down. And the fact is, we know our flaws. We know that we aren't there yet. But we try and become a little better every year. A little more God's daughter or God's son. As beautiful as a bride. Or as Proverbs says, as splendid as a prince walking before his people. The English writer C.S. Lewis says, it's a serious thing to live in the society of possible gods and goddesses, to remember that the dullest, most uninteresting person that you can talk to might one day be a creature which if you saw it now, you would be strongly tempted to worship. All day long, we are in some degree helping each other to become more saintly or more hellish. It is in the light of these overwhelming possibilities, it is with the awe and circumspection proper to them that we should conduct our dealings with one another, our friendships, our loves, our play, our politics. There are no ordinary people you never talk to a mere mortal. Natures, cultures, arts, civilizations, they are mortal, and their life is to ours as the life of a gnat. But it is immortals whom we joke with, marry, work with, snub, and exploit. It is immortals who will become everlasting splendors, the sort of creatures we might well worship. So when we look through the door of Christ's love, look to see who else is in that door. Wonder how you can enter that door more fully. It may seem a way off, but every step you take toward it is a step toward light and Christ. The train is coming. But it's taking us to paradise through the door of Christ into the heart of God. It is not for evil or shame that we need to worry or prepare. 
but we need to prepare for that party that raises the dead. Lazarus simply can't stay dead if Jesus shows up. And Paul says when he falls asleep, he knows he will wake up in the presence of Jesus. And he too seems to expect that there will be quite a feast with all that steak and brisket, good wine, good beer, good sides, and desserts, and the joy of seeing all your family and friends whom you have not seen, and to rejoice with them, not just for a night or a season, but for always. A joyous All Saints Day to you. Let us stand and profess our faith in the words of the Nicene Creed. We believe in one God, the Father, the Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, of all that is seen and unseen. We believe in one Lord, Jesus Christ, the only Son of God, eternally begotten of the Father, God from God, light from light, true God from true God, he doth not made, of one being with the Father. Through him all things were made. For us and for our salvation, he came down from heaven. By the power of the Holy Spirit, he became incarnate from the Virgin Mary and was his man. For our sake, he was crucified under Pontius Pilate. He suffered death and was buried. On the third day, he rose again. In accordance with the scriptures, he has ascended into heaven and is seated at the right hand of the Father. He will come again in glory to show us the living and the dead, and his kingdom will have no end. We believe in the Holy Spirit, the Lord, the giver of life, who proceeds from the Father and the Son. With the Father and the Son, he is worshipped and glorified. He has spoken through the prophets. We believe in one holy Catholic and apostolic church. We acknowledge the baptism for the forgiveness of sins. We look for the resurrection of the dead and the life of the world to come. Amen. In peace we pray to you, Lord God. For all people in their daily life and work, for our families, friends, and neighbors, and for those who are alone. For this community, the nation, and the world. For all who work for justice, freedom, and peace. For the just and proper use of your creation. For the victims of hunger, fear, injustice, and oppression. For all who are in danger, sorrow, or any kind of trouble. For those who minister to the sick, the friendless, and the needy. For the peace and unity of the Church of God. For all who proclaim the gospel, and all who seek the truth. For Michael, the presiding bishop, for George and Michael, our bishops, and for all bishops and other ministers. For all who serve God in His church. For the special needs and concerns of this congregation. Hear us, Lord. For your mercy and grace. We thank you, Lord, for all the blessings of this life. We will exalt you, O God our King, and, and praise your name forever and ever. And we pray for all who have died, 
that they may have a place in your eternal kingdom. Lord, let your loving kindness be upon them. Almighty God, who has given us this good land for our heritage, we humbly beseech you that we may always prove ourselves people mindful of your favor and glad to do your will. Bless our land with honorable industry, sound learning, and pure manners. Save us from violence, discord, and confusion, from pride and arrogance, and from every evil way. Defend our liberties, fashion us into one united people. Endure with the spirit of wisdom those to whom in your name we entrust the authority of government, that there may be justice and peace at home, and that through obedience to your law, we may show forth your praise among the nations of the earth. In the time of prosperity, fill our hearts with thankfulness. In the day of trouble, suffer not our trust in you to fail. All this and all these prayers we ask through Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. Amen. Let us confess our sins against God and our neighbor. Most merciful God, we confess that we have sinned against you in thought, word, and deed by what we have done and by what we have left undone. We have not loved you with our whole heart. We have not loved our neighbors as ourselves. We are truly sorry and we humbly repent. For the sake of your Son, Jesus Christ, have mercy on us and forgive us, that we may delight in your will and walk in your ways to the glory of your name. Amen. Almighty God, have mercy upon you. Forgive you all your sins through our Lord Jesus Christ. Strengthen you in all goodness, and by the power of the Holy Spirit, keep you in eternal life. Amen. The peace of the Lord be always with you. And also with you. Please be seated for a few announcements. Um, next Sunday, uh, as you already found out, this Sunday is... Uh, Fall back Sunday, and you got an extra hour of sleep, so I hope that worked out well for you. Um, next Sunday is our Stewardship Sunday, and I hope that everyone has received a stewardship letter and a stewardship pledge card. If you have not, would you be so kind to email or call the office, and we will get you one uh, to have. Um, it will be very important for all of us to make a pledge this year. We have lost a few uh, people uh, in the last year and a half, and we will need to uh, move out of our comfort zone to continue to do the ministry that we would like to do. If you have not picked up a forward movement, uh, uh, the daily devotional, there are not, not only some at the back of the church, but if you are shut in or unable to come by, please let us know and we will either mail or deliver by to you a forward movement and gladly so. Two more announcements. The Sunday after Pledge Sunday, the 21st of November, Bishop Michael Smith, the Assistant Bishop of the Diocese, will be here at both services uh, to make his visitation on behalf of Bishop um, George and also to confirm at least one or two people. So I hope that you will uh, uh, come and greet him. We are looking 
for a few uh, limited uh, occasion singers for Advent and Christmas. We know some of you are out there, but are unwilling to make a longer commitment uh, throughout the year, but we wondered if you would like to take the uh, fun and discipline of taking the four weeks of Advent and preparing with the choir for those special days and for Christmas Eve. And if you would, please uh, call or email Cliff Barnum, and he will be glad to uh, greet you, welcome you, and set you up. Are there other announcements of daytime or place? Are there any birthdays? Any? A birthday? Yes, I Okay. If you have a birthday and you are uh, at home, please call the office and we will try and make an arrangement for um, stopping by and doing a birthday blessing there. Walk in love as Christ loved us and gave himself for us, an offering and sacrifice to God. Let us give thanks to 
the Lord our God. It is right to give him thanks and praise. It is right and a good and joyful thing, always and everywhere, to give thanks to you, Father Almighty, creator of heaven and earth. It is a right and joyful thing to remember your glorification in the assembly of your saints. All your creatures praise you and your faithful servants bless you, confessing before the rulers of this world the great name of your only Son. Therefore we praise you, joining our voices with angels and archangels and with all the company of heaven who forever sing this hymn to proclaim the glory of your name. Hallowed be thy name, 
Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory, forever and ever. Amen. Hallelujah, Christ our Passover is sacrificed for us. Therefore, let us seek the peace. Hallelujah.
pray. Almighty and ever-living God, we thank you for feeding us with the spiritual food of the most precious body and blood of your Son, our Savior, Jesus Christ, and for assuring us in these holy mysteries that we are living members of the body of your Son and heirs of your eternal kingdom. And now, Father, send us out to do the work you have given us to do, to love and serve you as faithful witnesses of Christ our Lord. To him, to you, and to the Holy Spirit, the honor and glory, now and forever. Amen. The peace of God, which passes all understanding, keep your hearts and minds in the knowledge and love of God and of his Son, Jesus Christ our Lord. And the blessing of God Almighty, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit be with you this day and remain with you always.